Are you ready, Grant? <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm totally ready. Let's I don't do know it. if you're ready. I don't uh, know if you're ready. I think that you might need, um, I don't know, you might need more readiness. All right. It's, t- it's time. Up. Just no, never mind. I'm charge it up. Ch- you know, get get. Get psyched, get pumped. I can't anymore. Why? You bummed me out. I, I thought d- I was ready, and you guys t- called me out on oh, it. Oh, God damn it. All right. Well, welcome <laughs> to the great site. <laughs> Come on, Greg. Give, I'm give ready. Me. All right. He's ready. Oh, <laughs> uh, can you dig it? It's time for the Rage Select podcast right here on Rage Select. Uh, I am Jeff. I'm also. Grant. And uh, yes, Grant, it is. Um, I'm trying to think of like what podcast number we're on. I think it's like 80 something. And uh, are we on a new season? Oh yeah, yeah. I count it by years, basically. So this will be the third, three? the third year. Yeah, we started off season three. Season three, of course. That you know, well, it's not like we have cliffhangers at the end of the December podcast, <laughs> where it's like, <gasps> is Grant gonna die next season on the Rage Like podcast? Remember when Jason epically quit? Yeah, that was a pretty good cliffhanger. Yeah, well, it, except that it happened like, and you always the think they're gonna over. replace that guy, that that guy fan favorite with right. someone. Cr- crappy mm-hmm. and they did me yeah well <laughs> so take that audience no so what i was gonna do was uh is uh because jason left right that means like if we follow our traditional fictional counterparts that means that from here on out it's a prequel to rage slight right because that actor isn't around anymore and you don't want to just replace him yeah yeah true you know, you know we you had to do a flashback right this isn't james bond or batman or something we can't the, of course, the trick is that eventually oh. i'm gonna evolve into jason is that what's gonna That's, happen uh, I'm, I'm younger jason <laughs> back before he, i had to go into wit- witness protection and Who, change my if, name. if you had to cast a hollywood personality to come in as the the jason murphy replacement who would you bring on? Who would do? Who would you say? You know, it's it's funny. I was just thinking the other day about Jason and Allison and uh-huh. their relationship, and I, I was listening to the WTF podcast okay. with Mark Marin, and he was interviewing uh, what's the dude's name, uh, Cyril Figgis from Archer. Oh, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Cornell. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yep. And Jason sounds a lot like him, uh-huh. and he kind of you kind of look. They're both, they're both white guys. Okay. Whatever. So I'm like, oh, I, you know, I know all white people look the same. They to you, all Grant. look the same to me. <laughs> uh, and I was like, okay, I could see Chris Parnell, Jason being Chris Parnell. I mean, everyone always wants to say he's he's Archer from Archer, right? But in a way, he sounds a lot like Chris Parnell. I don't know if I really hear that. I oh man, really I hear it. a lot. Yeah, and I think Allison is totally uh, Megan Mullally. Uh-huh. Like they're, they're like the same people to me. Isn't that uh, um, Ron Swanson's wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Offerman's wife. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's that's your casting. So, yeah. As far as as casting those two. Okay. All right. I'd All go right. With those people. Uh, who would you cast as yourself? You do self casting. I don't know. I mean, I, I always hear who other people would cast me as. It's it's the Daniel Radcliffe's and the. And the uh, Elijah Wood, Elijah Woods. Yeah. Although both of those guys would need to put on a couple pounds, I think <laughs> it's always been like, is it weird that every so often I find it incredibly narcissistic when people are like, yeah, I look just like that guy. Uh, maybe it's because the only person anybody ever compares me to is that uh, uh, Alton Brown dude. And I'm it's like Zach Galifianakis, Zach Galifianakis <laughs> with, the, with the beard. Now. <laughs> it's just you have a beard. So it's like, oh, you're Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. Bearded guys. They all look the same. <laughs> well, you know what? Great. This is the time we we're, we might have a kind of a light podcast this week because we don't have that many questions. And uh, there wasn't really a whole hell of a lot of news. So unless like you've just been what have you been doing? Is there anything happening? Have you had anything? Anything? This is the personal experience part of the podcast. Oh, personal experience yeah. stuff. Uh, um, eating any good sandwiches? Uh, you ridden a roller coaster? Not or? a lot. I mean, I, I juggle a couple different shows. I've just been kind of trying to navigate mm-hmm. my workload with those. I mean, I do the TV podcast, TV dudes. I do the beer one, and I do this. Yeah. So I mean, it's that as well as. Child rearing, which I yeah, know that's always interesting to talk to to a bunch of video game fans sure. on the podcast. So I'm not going to bother. Let me ask you, how young? Uh, so the, the generation that, that I came from, it's like I don't have a good answer to this question, but like, how old does your daughter have to be before she gets a cell phone? Like, what's the youngest age you would give a child a cell phone? Uh, I mean, I feel it's like a little younger. I think my sisters, who are older than me, um, kind of wait until their kids are teenagers. So as soon as they hit thirteen or so, mm-hmm. I'm guessing it, for my kid, it'll probably be uh, cl- a little younger. Even now, it'll probably be 
when they're she's like a 10, tween. Yeah, I'd imagine somewhere okay. around there. Um, because I, I mean, I feel like it's it's no longer like uh, such a a present so much as like a, a necessity. Okay, I, I think you want your kid to have have that contact to uh, to be able to look up whatever on the internet, be able to contact you if if they need to. Be able to, I don't know, I, I mean, even at, at that young age, contact their grandparents. I don't know who else they'd really be talking to. Right. A couple buddies. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think if I did anything last week that was worth talking about. I mean, I went and... You had that Taco Bell. Remember you went to Taco Bell? I went to Taco Bell. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I went to Taco Bell one time. <laughs> we talk about Taco Bell entirely too much on this show. Have they started sponsoring this yet? No. Then we're just doing no. it for free. Yes, we are just doing it for free. You get nothing, Taco God Bell. Just, damn it. just edit all that. Make them all bleeps, whoever I'm saying right here. <laughs> that's way too much work. Bleep that's is delicious. That's way that's too much work. all I'm trying work. to say. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, it, I feel like there were some new games. I finally freaking beat Dragon Age last week. That is which, actually a pretty big accomplishment. That's yeah, been a albatross around your neck for a while. Yeah, I finally have the ability to. Dis- and like this week, I got to go play some Saints Row, and I was just like, oh yeah, what a lovely game. I could just you know uh, just blowing up this world. And I I think it's weird. I played that game kind of from start to finish like two or three times, and I'm playing it again, and I'm I'm maybe a little bit bored of it, but no more so. I mean, I don't know. Dragon it's kind of nice to take that switch from something that's so objective oriented, and just go to uh, an open source, uh, uh, open sandbox world where you can just fuck around for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you feel that ticking clock, yeah, ever looming. I don't know. The days of your lives dripping away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let's not get into that. That's kind of a dark <laughs> thought when I add up the number of hours that I played video games. Just, age. Uh, what have you done with my uh, life? Like we, whenever you save the game, it shows you how long you've been playing it. <laughs> it's just, like, just to shame you. Sixty six hours. Like oh god. It's like um, sixty six hours that you could have been out socializing with other people. Yeah, I would have done that. I would have no. been socializing with other people <laughs> anyway. Don't, don't lie, Dragon Age. Yep. Um, all right. Well, you know what? I I. I don't know that I have anything else to really talk about, so I think that we'd maybe just well, jump right into the news. I, I see this news story just like sitting right behind you on the computer screen, <laughs> and it, it's so enticing to talk about. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm all for be, it. This probably be a, a much bigger topic of conversation than Taco Bell and and children's <laughs> cell phones. Um, yeah, so Windows, Microsoft had this conference where they were primarily talking about Windows 10, and there's a whole bunch of different little sub stories in here that kind of tie into Windows 10. But the one that caught my eye more than anything thing was for this crazy new thing. So for a while now, Graham, mm-hmm. th- the question has been out there, what the fuck is Microsoft doing with VR tech, right? Because Sony has a VR headset for the PlayStation, Project Morpheus, in development right now Google on the PC. Has Google Glass. Google Glass is garbage, and they stopped selling it. Oh, but they had, they had it. But that wasn't VR. That was more like augmented reality, right? It was just... Up in front of you, you could see stuff. Uh, I'm talking about like f- this is sort of similar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get to that in a second. But okay, th- okay. Uh, but we had the Oculus, and th- there's a hole with uh, oh god, what was it? There was a, a big um, like tech conference thing that happened a few weeks ago. I can't for the life of me. It was it wasn't GDC, but C- uh, CES. CES, yeah. And there was a couple of new players. There's a co- I mean. Right now, Oculus has shown that VR is hot, right? So there's a couple people out there who are just like, yeah, we're going to make one, too. We're going to make one, too. So on the PC front, on the PlayStation front, in a few different places, with Google Cardboard, you've got the... Um, the Whoa, what's Google Cardboard? Google Cardboard is this basically this cardboard a box that you can order from, that you can print out from Google, and you cut it out, and you glue it together, and then you can put your cell phone in the front of it, order a pair of lenses that go in it to make, like, the Little Rascals Gilligan's Island version of VR, right? It's just like this, like, <laughs> super cheap box that you just stick on the front of your face, and you can kind of have a VR experience through that. Oh. But Samsung's got that Gear VR for cell phones. so it's, it's all over the place right now. And so the question that I've been asking is, I mean, if this stuff really does manage to take off, and I know there's a lot of people on the website, I'm going to tell it to them right now, that hate it when I go off on this for a while, but that it's been a while, all right? <laughs> um, but I've been curious, what is the hell is Microsoft doing, right? Because sure. they haven't announced anything. Well, they did announce this nutty-ass thing called Microsoft HoloLens, 
And for those of you that haven't seen the video, it would probably be easier to describe or easier to figure out know what we're talking about if you just go watch that video real fast. But what, what it is... What's the website? You just type Microsoft HoloLens. Uh, yeah, pull I just up. put that into Google. I'm not going to read off a whole URL. But, sure. uh, but basically, this is an augmented reality headset. So it's a... It's a headset. It's it's more like Google Glass, like you were saying, right? Than an yeah. Oculus or a Project. Morpheus. I mean, that's what it reminded me of immediately. Except for it seems a little bit more robust. Yeah. So it's a it's a standalone headset. Doesn't have to be connected to anything. That basically has a series of a couple of different panes that go over over the front of your vision, so you can still see. Um, but then it's got the ability to track what's in front of you and project three dimensional imagery. Uh, virtual holograms, like they they call them holograms, but they're they're not really holograms. I mean, sure, hologram tech is something different. But um, into the room around you, right? And then they've apparently got some kind of sensor on the front that you can put your hand out and you can interact with this stuff. You can you can put your hand in your vision and you can d- spread stuff out and make it smaller and have three dimensional. So Minecraft you can have your Netflix around. screen placed over on this one wall. Right. And then you can uh, have a little video game of Minecraft that's interactive over another corner. Or like on a desk, right? Like on it'll de- it'll, yeah. it'll 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 track that surface and then it'll put stuff on it. Now it's interesting because this particular or or the last time that I saw anything that was like this particular technology was the three DS had some augmented reality stuff. And there's some for the cell phones as well where you point the camera at a at a flat table, right? Mm. And then you for the for the Nintendo one, you put a card down, and then like a thing would burst out of your table and start walking around. And it could track where the table was, or you could do this one game where you would turn around in a room and there was stuff in the room that you could only see through the camera. But this is supposed to be over your whole vision, taking up the room with a bunch of different Windows apps that you can watch. They showed Netflix, they showed some they showed some stuff that was just straight up. Like the, bullshit. It was st- okay. All right. I would like to preface this particular Jeff rant by saying, if this thing right mm-hmm. is affordable and works the way that it does in this video, I will be flabbergasted because what they show in this video is it's insane it's insane if it works like this uh, that's fantastic okay uh, at one point they have uh, a couple of designers working in some super fancy uh modern house slash office right uh where they are designing a motorcycle yeah and they have this full-scale motorcycle and is it i'm not sure if there's a real motorcycle that they're projecting additional parts onto yes or if it was like already one one model and then they added other stuff onto that model but like, like she was going over and like add like pulling up the engine like it was nothing. Like you weren't having to like go and like figure out and like oh no, I grabbed the wrong pixel. I, I fucked up here. Nope. So, I mean, it all seemed a little too easy. Well, here's a here's okay. So I don't I don't I haven't read anything like as for, oh, this video I believe came out today, right? So I don't think there's been any super nitty gritty stuff, and I haven't had a chance to really drill down into it, right? But here's the main problem that I see with a device like this. Yeah. So in order to have that experience of seeing a thing, even if, we're, even if all we're talking about is just a screen, mm-hmm. right? Not three-dimensional bullshit, I'm making my kids starship garbage, right? But just Netflix, but it's on a wall. The first thing that you have to have is you have to have a very, very, very high refresh rate on the goggle or on the unit itself, right? Because if you turn it's got to be able to it's got to be able to keep seeing that wall and keep that screen where it's supposed to be yeah. so if you turn and it's all juddery and it moves around it really breaks that that's what happened with the the 3DS AR stuff right is that if you move too far too fast it would get confused really easily because if you pointed it very carefully at a table it could tell the table was there but then if you started moving around it couldn't keep up and it couldn't tell where anything was but the technology should be at a point where they could resolve that so the only the the only issue that i'm curious about is how much this thing is going to cost because mm-hmm. the thing is that the tech is there but the amount of quality tech that you would have to put into this thing in order to make all that stuff work is a much higher bar than you get with a VR headset, right? Well, okay. So, yeah, like you already said a couple different times, yeah. we just found out about this today. Yeah. It doesn't have a price on it yet. Yeah. 
I don't think what so. would you be willing to pay for what you saw? Well, if he, what you saw is legit. Here's the thing. I think that um I think that um so Oculus is shooting for somewhere between three to four hundred dollars, right, for their commercial product. Most mm-hmm. of these things look like they're gonna be shooting for about between three and four hundred dollars. Yeah. That's what I would pay. Because I think that a lot of times what people tend to forget is that a lot of people look at the VR craze of the of the nineties, right? Mm. When they when they hear about VR, they hear um they remember all those horrible big headsets right in the nineties, right? And they say, it didn't work then, why would it work now? Well, one of the major reasons that it didn't work then was because you were going to pay $2,500 for a headset that had a resolution of maybe 640 by 480. I mean, one of the ones that I used weighed like eight times as much as an Oculus, cost about $2,500, and 320 by 400 was the maximum resolution you got. And it didn't have 3D, right? I remember uh, when I was in design school, I ended up designing my own VR helmet. Mm. That looked kind of like, I guess, like the Oculus. But it was it was strictly for going to a museum so that it would add to the museum experience with information. Right. And I was like, look at these other features. You can have infrared <laughs> or night vision if you want. Why would you want that? Why would you? It was so dumb. What I for? <laughs> and, like, and I was adding all these features. And I was just like, <laughs> man, it's so such a narrow scope for me to just have this for a museum. The, the, the Tate dumb. Modern After Dark where it's like, yeah, we turned off all the lights. Here's yeah. some night vision goggles. <laughs> Check this shit out. Like, awesome. Yeah, it's grainy and uh, it's grainy and green. So I haven't, yeah. like I said, I haven't read anything about this. I think it's a really interesting idea if they can keep the price down, one, right? Two, if they can keep... Um, if 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 it works as advertised, that's really the biggest thing. Is if because all the shit in the video, I mean that's all rendered, right? That's I mean fantasy. That it, should it, be orcs and yeah. shit, right? But but it's interesting that you say they need to keep the price down because I imagine with something like this, they could follow the Apple model and they could charge two grand for one of these. See, but that's the problem is that in order, okay, as long as it's it's their shit is tight. And but, there's no problem. But see, the thing is that um, I think that this is the problem that VR had in the 90s when it was coming out, right? Is if the if it's not in an affordable enough price point for consumers to buy it, then there is no adoption. And if there is no adoption, then there's no pressure on developers to make anything for it. If it's 2000 bucks per HoloLens kit, and like Google Glass, right? So you look at the... I mean, I didn't have a Google Glass, but those were like... Three grand, right, or something like that, or yeah. two thousand dollars, something like that. And they were selling like they like they couldn't keep up with the inventory initially. Did they? Oh, okay, I mean, I, mean, I know I, that it was like it was constantly like on back order. All I know is that, but they only did a little limited test run. I think. All I know is that I feel like if if VR in any kind of augmented reality tech is going to work this time, it's got to be priced at a point where. You're always going to have enthusiasts, right, that buy anything. They don't care how much it is. People who have too much money, right? Sure. But I'm not going to buy a two thousand dollar. If this thing is two thousand dollars, I'm not going to get one of them, right? Uh, I mean, maybe. I, 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 I once again would say, look at what Apple did because I think that they set an, a really high price point, and it it did seem a little bit unaffordable in in relation to all the other phones that were out at the market at the time. Remember, you could buy a phone for. 40 60 bucks that sure. was the standard price for a phone yeah and even then we were kind of like balking at the the price but then you have to take into account this isn't just a phone anymore this is kind of a life utility tool and um and that that dramatically alters what you're you're investing in well see uh, okay for my money i feel like the only reason that the iphone managed to do what it did was because there's a there's another component to the apple thing that microsoft doesn't have people like the brand of apple to the point where they'll buy any fucking thing they put out right it's true uh to the point they'll and and i've said this before like look guys i know there's people out there that have apple products and they love them quite a bit but i've been in the inside of a bunch of apple products there is no reason for them to cost as much as they cost i mean i literally no reason for them to cost as much as they cost i think it's interesting that we're talking about like hollow lenses right now right and we're focusing on the price point that we don't even know <laughs> when there's such an awesome discussion about what this thing can actually do yeah potentially and we're um, not talking about that so I, i'm actually kind of scanning this verge article at the same time because like yeah. i said i didn't get a chance to 
to really read too much about this before we started. Um, but 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 based off of what we saw, but what's interesting is if everything does come together, this is really interesting technology, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's just as fascinating to me as VR in the point of um, again augmenting you know what's around you to the point where. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if the okay, if the motion tech and stuff on this works the way that's supposed to, and the the feeling of presence, if they have that presence like the Rift does, right? And because they have control of both your eyes, they can totally do that. We know how to do that now, right? When you split the sure. 3D and you can make stuff have presence. This could be a, uh, the. Diff- I mean, if you miniaturize this to the point where it's as big as a bulky pair of sunglasses, you this could be cell phone replacement, right? I mean, I mean, this could be. Instantaneous. I was gonna say like time travel, but I don't think that's the right term. Yeah. But like you get like like a military uh, overseas and someone who's like over in uh, Afghanistan. Sure. They could go into a room with this this device and have their house scanned and feel like they walked back into their house and they they're seeing their family, but they're across the sea. Yeah. Potentially. I mean, when they showed like the the uh, Curiosity rover on Mars and that guy's interacting with this rover and like scanning different like areas of of the planet's surface mm. i think that's an like a great example is like no this this can take skype and uh what was it um google hangouts or uh, right. whatever the apple one is facetime and just take that to this next r- like level of like of feeling actually that you're in the same room with them more so than you're just looking on a screen yes and I, what That's I find fascinating, what I find really fascinating about this is that this is what I've been talking about. What the Oculus for six months yeah. is that they're all that all that same stuff could totally work with that device as well. And I, I, I don't want that, I don't want that to come off like I'm advocating this one over this one because I don't know what this one is like. But I, I okay, maybe I'm wrong, but I think the Oculus. It, it operates more on um, what you're seeing on the screen. Is it like have a screen that projects over top of reality? Well, the the main difference there is that uh, um, there's a the, not the Oculus, but there's another tech called Gear VR, where you basically it's you put a cell phone into an Oculus case, right, mm-hmm. and then you have a camera on the cell phone that shows you what's in front of you through the cell phone. A lot of the same technology could apply. This seems like it's way more open. In fact, this seems like it would be great for people who get, like you, who can't wear an Oculus for 10 minutes without feeling like you want to throw up, right? <laughs> it's true. Because you can still see the world through it instead of having yeah. that. I mean, I'm more used to being in a different <laughs> world. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it sounds really interesting. I just, it's like Microsoft, Microsoft's tech com- uh, uh, divisions have done really interesting things in the past. They had this one that was a, a, an array of projectors that projected over an entire room, and they had one... I mean, you remember the... What was the big table that they had called, where it was... You projected down on it from above, and you could put your oh, hands uh, over Tony it? Tony Stark's table, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That stuff looked really interesting as well. This I is, don't know what it's called, though. Supposedly, though, supposed to be out before... Uh, or sometime this year, I really? guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, at least that's what I read. The main, the main I mean, it looks it looks too good to be true. What they showed in that, I mean, of course they're gonna make it su- look look super slick, but it looks super slick. The main the main question the main question again comes down to just Microsoft has been doing more with cameras in the gaming world, right, than mm-hmm. anybody else. The Kinect, I think, is a is a uh, more sophisticated camera array than we see in some of the other stuff with the combination of both an infrared and a regular camera. So they've got a little bit more experience with that, at least in my opinion. But the question is just, if it can keep up with your head movement, great. If it can't, it's worthless. Because the moment that you're playing Minecraft and you move your head and the whole thing kind of moves a little bit apart from the static object that you're looking at, the illusion is broken at that point. And that will give you a sense of weird kind of sickness and judder and stuff when you look at stuff. Uh, well, maybe. I don't know. That's what it does when I'm talking about I mean, about I would think that would have to be, like, one of their primary considerations, making sure that if you're supposed to engage with this also in the real world, that it feels fluid. I, You know, okay. I mean, that's like making sure that if, if it doesn't fit uh, anyone's actual human head, right. it's worthless. Of course. I mean... 
I'll, those I'll, have to happen, right? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it is, Grant. Is that you've been burned too many times. It's kind of that. It's that I know Microsoft. I've worked for Microsoft before, and like Microsoft has this attitude when they put out stuff like this where they do it and it's a good idea, but they just don't follow it up well. The Kinect was a perfect example. They jump the gun. Well, no. I mean, the Kinect is a perfect example. You say the Kinect was a really interesting device, but then there weren't really any games outside of like Fruit Ninja that you wanted to play on it, right? Is that they never... The, 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 the issue with all of these devices outside of the stuff that you're normally looking at, right, is that you have to get them... You have to get enough of them out there and you have to push them hard enough to make a real sea change in the way that people use them. And that's why Apple is so impressive is because iPad... I don't think another company could have made the iPad work. Apple had to do it first... The Apple advocates jumped on board with that, and then all the knockoffs came, and we had those. Even the iPhone, there were there were a couple companies that had iPhone-like devices, but if you Apple puts one out, then enough people will buy them that you get a hook, you get an install base in there. And then, I mean, once people saw how much money you could make developing an app, sure, it, it just bandwagoned. But you got to get enough units out there, and that's one of the things that I think. I don't know. I'm curious to know how many people out there. I don't know that many people who have Microsoft phones, who have phones that are running the Windows phones, right? Yeah, it's true. Like, and I know. I mean, I mean, I, I, it, it seems like it's Android or it's Apple. Those are the two big dogs. For a long time, I've talked to. I mean, I used to work at a computer store, right? Every time a new Microsoft OS comes out, nobody wants it. Right? So, do you think if if Apple was the one releasing this product, it would be a, a different story? I'd be like. Yeah, th- there's a lot more confidence that what they're going to deliver in the end product is going to be as solid as, as... I mean, they have a reputation that Microsoft well, doesn't have. I want to. What I want to do is I want to keep saying this, right, is that I want this. I want to put my hands on one of these, and I want to see what it's like, because I'm sure. a big fan of all this shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it worries me. It worries me when Microsoft... When Microsoft comes in... And they basically take somebody else's idea, right? And they refine it, and they use their their power, right? They use how big of a corporation they are, how much money they have, to do something like make an Xbox, right? Yeah, that's, I think that's great because they've got the money to be able to muscle into markets that they could get taken out of. When they go off on a limb, which is what this is, there aren't five or six different manufacturers making devices like this. There's only one, right? So that makes me nervous because it means that this could be a great product that they put out. Hell, I don't know. Windows phones could be way better than either Android or Apple, but I don't know because I won't buy them. I don't think their operating system is any good. Because every time it's Windows, ugly. when they put out Windows 8, right, and they're like, yeah, th- that right there, that right there is the attitude of Microsoft that makes me nervous about whenever they do anything like this. Microsoft put out Windows 8. Have you used Windows 8? Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Then they, and they're like, oh, Guess what? We took the start menu away. Now it's this bullshit iPad interface. You go, but I don't want that. <laughs> Too bad, sucker. That's what. Uh, that's the future. We're giving you the future. Like, yeah, but I don't. <laughs> I want the past. They're like, yeah, there is no past anymore. We decide. And then two years later, right in Windows eight point one, they're rolling that start menu functionality right. back uh, in there. Sorry about that. Uh, we we forgot you guys decide. <laughs> but I I feel like they're they're bad at. I feel like they're bad at listening to feedback. I feel like they get an idea, mm. and they want that idea to be a thing so badly that it takes a huge amount. Now, on the Xbox One, they did good with rolling back their... Because it used to be the Xbox One had to be online all the time, and they, they everyone... I mean, I bought one of the ones that ships with a Kinect, and then they finally took the Kinect out of the box and lowered the price by 50 bucks. They eventually came around. So if, this, if they're going to pay attention to what people are saying to them about this... Great, but then the other thing that makes me a little bit worried about it is the fact that you look again, and I, I hate to keep harping on this, of the Oculus, right? This year, we're seeing the last pre-production model of the Oculus. They've mm-hmm. been through three different dev states. They went through the DK1. I've got a DK2. This year, Crescent Cove is a DK3. Then they'll have the release. They've also got the Samsung Gear VR. They've got all this feedback on. And you say they've been watching the way that people react to this technology every single step of the way. So if you just put this out and it's the version one and it's no good and you paid $2,000 for something that doesn't really work very well, that's that's risky, you know? Yeah, 
I agree. And I mean, that that is the biggest optimum word right there. Risk. They're they're putting a lot of risk, I think, uh, in into this, trying to maybe get ahead of the curve and what they can already see. Everyone else is already heading in this direction. Uh, they want to be the first one, kind of like how Apple is the first with the smartphone devices. Or, sure. You know, the first legit one, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I would think that they also have to know they better have their shit locked down and tight to do such a thing. And traditionally, I don't think they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think they get their there. Their reputation precedes them. I think they get there eventually, right? But mm-hmm. I don't think, I mean, poor, poor goddamn... Fantasia got screwed when Microsoft took the Connect out of the box, and now everybody who buys an Xbox doesn't have a Connect, you know. And they were pushing the TV on that thing super hard, right? I don't really know anybody that uses that thing as a DVR. I mean, that Xbox One is a full DVR support and stuff, <laughs> but I don't have cable, so it yeah. doesn't matter to me. Okay, so l- let me ask you um, in regards to looking at this device here, this yep. HoloLens, uh, how do you think this would work with gaming? Well, um, they've had a few. They've had a few. Um, they've had a few technologies where they talk about the one I was talking about, where they shine the lights in the room and they project stuff all over the room. Mm-hmm. They've had some tech that messed with that. They do have experience with the Connect integration. I think that so. There's another part of this news story that has said that um, uh, when they were unveiling Windows 10. Uh, that Windows 10 is going to have some streaming functionality where you can stream. There's there's two... I think they're talking about streaming... No, I think they announced that you're streaming... You can stream your Xbox One onto your PC. That's a little odd. Or any Windows 10 device, a tablet, or anything that has Windows 10 on it. So if that thing is running Windows 10, technically you could turn on your Xbox, right? Project a screen as big as the wall that you've got to look at on that wall and then stream the game from there to the headset and then back to the gaming console Ah. Um, which is interesting because at that point any game that had 3d functionality you would have actual 3d when you were looking at it you know because it's got control over your eyes you could stream movies in 3d to it Um, the, the main question just becomes there have been uh, there have been a few augmented reality experiences before, but a lot of times I I feel there's still a divide in gaming and gamers where it's like it would be really interesting if I had a video game right and it was played on the top of my desk instead of you know on a screen right where you sure. have little three D characters walking around that's part of the. Uh, uh, Oculus that I love so much, right? Is mm. that you can play games where it's like you're looking down into the game, right? Like you're a big giant. Um, again, the issue is that you have to get developers to make those games. You have to have that functionality into your games. And so it remains to be seen how hard it is to get a game onto this thing and what kind of... Like, you could have the best game experience of all time where you have a game where it scans your room and it just, like, instead of playing Dragon Age, the freaking Inquisitor is running around on your carpet, right, in a forest that's being projected on the ground in your living room where you look at a dining room table, right? You've got, here's the whole game, and you're, like, looking down on it like a giant, right? Or it's a first-person experience where you fill up your vision. If you can, if what that Mars I mean, demo was saying, that, yeah. then you could fill up your vision, and etc. The problem is that you have to have... Just like with the Kinect, you've got to have enough units in people's hands to make a game developer want to waste precious development time integrating that functionality into their game when they could be doing it for something that has a more broad-reaching application. Like yeah. If the PS4 has a VR headset and the PC has a VR headset, you'd probably be better off just trying to get traditional VR stuff into your That's experience. always the apprehension with jumping into the new technology, yeah. Right. And, that's, and, that, and the other thing I thought was funny is that it, it kind of reminds me of the problems with the Wiimote that uh, it's like, man, I, I want to play these games, but I don't want to have to get up and actually interact. So I want to just sit on my couch and ha- live that sedentary life. Yeah. Well, it's um, in a lot of ways you could see it as, as moving too far too fast. Yeah. As, as far as just gaming goes, right? Not for, I mean, I think that as a... Um, as like a cell phone slash computer replacement, I think that's a really interesting technology, right? Like I'd love to be able to 
if that thing flips up, right, or if it's comfortable to wear on your head, I'd love mm-hmm. to be able to just be sitting in my living room and instead of having a TV, you just put this thing on and the TV is as big as the wall and you just watch whatever you want to. It uses your hand to switch between different channels and stuff like that. It'd be nice if you could share the same screen with someone else who's also wearing one. Yep. Too, so it's, I don't know. That, I don't see any reason. I mean, that's not a huge technological issue, but um, but for gaming... Gaming is still figuring out what all this stuff means, and I don't know. I yeah. don't think it has a lot of direct application right this second. G- gaming can take uh, the baby steps to uh, to adopt. The, it, it's a bigger investment for them. Well, then the other the other question for this tech right is um, how much of your view can it fill up? Because if it can take over your entire viewpoint, that is VR, right? Yeah. So. And the other question is, how opaque opaque is it, right? That's, that's why I keep wondering. I'm like, they show him looking uh, at a Netflix on the wall. Yeah. And I'm like, do you, if someone walk, were to walk behind, I, like, would or you see through? Or if there's a picture on the wall. Or, yeah. Or, I mean. Is there dots on the wall? Do you see that? I mean, how yeah. crisp How is opaque is it? How much of your... Because if this thing can take up your entire viewpoint, then... It is VR, but yeah. the way that it's laid out with those lenses, I just don't see a way unless unless those that outer lens that they have on there can literally turn opaque on a dime and move that opaqueness around to be a virtual screen no matter where you're looking, right? Um, I think it's gonna have to just be see through, right? That, like that's yeah the the, the way and that, then it's like well, what's the point, right? <laughs> But I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe maybe it can. Maybe they've got some kind of filter in there of, I want my crisp blackest blacks and whitest whites on my screen. Yeah, I I agree. I don't yeah. know. I'm interested in taking a look at it. Um, yeah, so absolutely. when they announce how much they are, I'm definitely going to take a look. Uh, anyway, some of the other things that they've announced. Um, let's see. Microsoft is quotey fingers really looking at enabling streaming from a Windows 10 PC to the Xbox One. Um, which is I, interesting. I don't know if you would be able to use that if you had a Windows 10 PC, if that meant that you could stream like a Steam game or something from there to the Xbox One. Okay. Um, there's also the Xbox app is coming to Windows 10, so you can see all your friends, you can send messages, you can do friend requests, you can see achievements and all the stuff that's on there. Yay. The Xbox One will also be <laughs> uh, able to run all of the Windows 10 app, apps that they put out I think the most interesting thing that came out of this, outside of this whole people think that because Phil Spencer was wearing a Battletoads shirt that there's going to be a new Battletoads game, Ooh. let's see, was that for the first year of Windows 10's rollout, it's a free upgrade from either Windows 7 or Windows 8.1, apparently. Um, uh, good. Which is interesting because I, I don't know. From, from what I've known, anybody who's been in this game long enough knows mm-hmm. that Upgrading to the latest Microsoft OS within the first year that it comes out is foolish. Yeah. Like, it's always broken and fucked up until they get to the second or third release uh, big, like, uh, service pack for it. Um, <laughs> and also, they're going to put Cortana in Windows 10. So oh, that, the lady okay. from Halo is going to be like the Siri of Windows 10 where you can say, hey, Cortana, should I wear a raincoat tomorrow? And Windows 10 will be like, here's the weather for tomorrow. Except that's I don't do a good Cortana but voice. But she doesn't sound like a sad robot. Is that what Siri sounds like? Siri, I've been yeah. had a- Siri sucks. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. Fable Legends is coming to the PC only on uh, Windows 10, and it'll let you do cross-play between that and the xbox one version there's a bunch of really interesting stuff that's in here none of it's like i, I think that overall our, our our assessment which i mean you you came down harder on it but i i agree with you is oh look at this, this is awesome yeah oh it's microsoft yep <laughs> end scene that's it. Oh, it's microsoft <laughs> yeah microsoft has been there they've they've not been wowing me recently i mean they they did all right with the Xbox One and the fact that they actually listened to what people wanted and rolled back hardware functionality that's built into the system. Yeah. Um, but they still got to earn it. They still got to earn it with their audience. So uh, they're, they're just a very arrogant company to me. They always have been. And it's hard for me to, as much as they have done right by gamers over a period of time. Yeah. 
there's still a part of me that's you know that comes from an era when it was like, what did Microsoft do now? Fuck those guys. <laughs> I hate Microsoft. <laughs> They're the devil. Steve Ballmer is Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, hey, I'm an I'm an Apple guy, so whatever. Yeah, I can't get behind Apple either. So I'm a Google man. Um, all right, so we got a we've got a few other announcements, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a break. And we're gonna come back and do some questions. Uh, so let's see. This year, uh, Sid Meier is making a game called Starships, which is apparently um, an interstellar strategy game for the PC, Mac, and iPad. Um, that's going to be a spinoff from um, Civilization Beyond Earth. This apparently takes place uh, way after Civilization Beyond Earth, and it's going to be piloting ships around and doing outer space combat, which I'm I'm into. It's going to be a turn-based game, hex-based. Cool. Looks all right. I mean, I didn't play Beyond Earth. I played it a little bit, and then I realized it was a Sid Meier game, and I've been playing it for like 14 hours, and I didn't <laughs> know where any of that time went, so I stopped. Uh, but... This is kind of games are dangerous, crack. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm much more excited about than this particular these Sid Meier spaceships, right? Yeah, Warhammer 40k <laughs> spaceships. <laughs> Warhammer 40k Gothic Armada has been announced by Tindalos Interactive, and this is going to be apparently a spinoff. You know Warhammer, right? With the Space Marines and the Orcs and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. This is a spinoff of that. Uh, in that universe, the the spaceships that they have look like these weird giant gothic churches with uh, like guns on the side of them. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to be able to it's play a little steampunkish. Mm-hmm. Roll these things out and blow shit up with them. And I am um, I'm pretty you're, excited. You're about psyched that. for that? Yeah, I like the Warhammer 40k universe quite a bit. And uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the new spaceship designs and like video games are these big chunky bulky awkward looking like jaggedy monsters i don't know it, it just it doesn't seem like that the obvious trajectory of modern design sensibility mm-hmm. and w- what the future spaceship designs would be but, uh, but wouldn't the future spaceship designs just be a giant white orb. box with an apple logo on the side of it i i, I mean <laughs> i i guess i it, it just seems like well this i mean this partic- in particular comes from comes from a universe that is very old in a lot of ways. With yeah, but uh, we were just looking at that Sid Meier's one as well, and, I, I, and there are all these big blocky machines that just, like, form over function. I don't know. It just seems a little weird. Yeah? I don't know. Um, I mean, you know, I, I'm waiting for Homeworld to put out a new game because that had really pretty spaceships. They were all ni- nicely colored. Um, let's see. Next up, we've got um, this is we kind of just got a few different just announcement things. All right. Um, Borderlands is putting out uh, the Borderlands Two and Borderlands the pre sequel on the Xbox One and PS Four in a remastered edition. <laughs> it's, like ev- it's like everyone is taking the George Lucas model yeah. of of marketing. It's like, hey. Take this and then package it, and then make a special edition of it, which you just change a couple of things, and then repackage it. And then, hey, you want to go ahead and do another little spin-off tie-in to McDonald's, and then repackage it. Well, and, oh, we gotta put it onto Xbox for now and repackage it. So it's weird because I feel like a lot of these games, like if any of the games that came out over the last few years, right, had a PC version. Mm. All they do is take the PC version. And apparently, it's not difficult at all to get that ported over to. PlayStation 4, Xbox One. So with a minimum amount of effort, you can get a PS4, Xbox One version of your previous generation game that looks significantly better to people who only have consoles, right, who are not PC players. Yeah. And you can sell it over again. And who cares if somebody only bought... Who cares if you only sell, you know, 10,000 copies, right? Like, it's... It's basically free development because you're not putting a lot of work back into these games. You're just yeah. all you're paying for is them. the additional packaging and marketing, right? Except with this Borderlands, the Handsome Collection, there actually is one really stupid thing or awesome thing or stupidly awesome, <laughs> depending on how <laughs> oh, you look at it. I saw this earlier. Yeah, uh, there is actually a um, is it life size? No, this, okay. So the, the fifty nine dollar version comes with Borderlands two, Borderlands pre sequel. And I think all of the DLC from Borderlands 2. Okay. But then there's also a... $400. Is it $400? Yes. $400 uh, 
edition that comes with a remote controlled claptrap robot that can roll around on one wheel and talk and do stuff. <laughs> That's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Um it's I don't kind of ridiculous. I don't love Borderlands enough for for a four hundred dollar claptrap robot. Um, I mean they're it seems they're banking. I wonder how many of those they actually made. Yeah, they're probably limited. I don't know. I mean I thought we got past this the year when when Call of Duty put out the real night vision goggles in their collector's edition oh. one, and I was just like, "Are we done with this shit yet?" I just want the video game. Eh, some people are going to buy it, and they're yeah. going to be really excited about yep. it. Yep, like their little collector's items. Got to get the whales out there. Um, all right. Well, speaking of things that are coming out, um, there was a new news story talking about Dead Rising Watchtower, which I mentioned to you, Grant, is the Crackle exclusive. Um, adaptation of dead rising aka the story of daisy maverick Ooh, yep and it's got rob riggle as uh frank west the main character from dead rising who is rob riggle rob riggle uh he's he's uh, is don rickles this kid no Changes he's a, a comedian that he's kind of like in everything else he's He's a. Uh, uh, did you see Twenty One Jump Street? No, I did not. He's uh, the the coach guy there. He's in the he's in prison. In the second one, that guy. Oh, okay. He, he kind of looks like a budget. He's a comedian who used to be in the military. He used to be like a. I think he was a. We, we call him uh, those drill sergeant people in the military before he decided to jump over and to do comedy. He's got a weird face. I think he was also a correspondent for a Daily Show for a bit. He's got a very odd face. Um, he, but, he looks like a big meathead. Yeah, but that works for Frank West. Um, so, and then they also have Megan Ori and Jessica Metcalf and Virginia Madsen. <laughs> okay. Jessica Metcalf or Jesse Metcalf? Jesse Metcalf. Sorry, sorry. That's a guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a guy from like those uh, early two thousands movies. It's like a I don't, throb guy. I don't know. This looks like it's going to be just really bad. <laughs> it's on Crackle. It's on Crackle. It's Crackle original programming, Grant. I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of <laughs> want to check it out, though. I want to see oh, yeah, if I'm they leave, can pull it off. Yeah, I'm going to leave it to you. you yeah. just, I don't have a Crackle membership. or what? Do you, how do you even watch Crackle? Is it I, I think phone? you just get an app. I have a Roku box. Maybe I can just get it on there. It's too many things these never days. never bothered. Um, <clears throat> okay. So that is happening, and it's <laughs> it's out in March. Mark your calendars, March twenty seventh. Yeah. Uh, also, this week uh, they announced the Evo twenty fifteen lineup, which is. Uh, uh, do you know what Evo is, Grant? New no. is the fighting game tournament they have every year, the big fighting game tournament. So, oh, okay, so the lineup for this: it's Ultra Street Fighter four, Marvel vs. Cap, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom three, uh, Super Smash Brothers on the Wii U is in there. Guilty Gear Zerd is in there. Killer Instinct, Mortal Kombat X, Persona four, Arena. Ultimax, uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee is back again, and Tekken Seven. No Goldeneye. No, nope. no point. That's it's a fighting game tournament. It's uh, just I, I fight. Games. I fight in that in Goldeneye. Yeah, you just use Odd Job and you cool. chop a lot. Oh, when was the last time you played Goldeneye? <laughs> How many <laughs> years has it been? Over a decade since you last put your hands on Goldeneye. Dust off the Academy and play oh, it at my some God. point. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They so apparently Zerd is in this year. We uh, Smash Brothers on the Wii U is in this year. Killer Instinct, Instinct Killer Instinct. Made it. Yeah, I think I don't know if that was. I think that was their last year, according to this. But Mortal Kombat uh, X is in there as well, or Mortal Kombat Ten is in there as well. So I don't know. It's a good lineup. I I every year I just watch the replays because I am way not good enough. I mean, I wouldn't watch the stuff live, but I go back and watch the highlight reels because they're really impressive. Yeah. Um, all right, and then the last news story that we've got. All right, Grant, I'm going to have you watch this video here real fast. And <laughs> while you're watching this video, I'm going to describe what's going on here. Okay. So, um, it's like a land party. In the Philippines, uh, apparently they've got a problem. So this is an internet cafe, uh, Grant, and these people are playing Dota 2. Oh, shit. And a gang has just come in. To uh, essentially assault, it looks like this one guy over here in the corner. Um, this guy, that one, guy's got a knife. One guy's got a knife, and then they just start throwing chairs on top of this guy. And they don't really seem to be beating his ass, but they do seem to be throwing every chair in the entire place on top of this guy. They just trash this internet cafe. Apparently, um, a few places in uh, one neighborhood in the Philippines has uh, has sees this hooliganism 
as they have a problem with the young men developing rivalries and assaulting each other in internet cafes over Dota 2, where they banned Dota 2. They banned a specific video game. But um, <laughs> I love there's just a couple dudes still sitting in there. They're like, well, oh, that's kind of fucked up. I'm but, still playing. Uh, I'm and still I don't know. Playing my game. So. This whole group of people. And then they, this is just one thing. This is in March of 2013, apparently, this happened. Okay. And all this giant gang just leaves. But I think it's incredible. Why did it switch over to color all of a sudden? Uh, it's a different camera. Uh, uh-huh. But this isn't specifically related to this. But I just thought it was interesting that there's a country in the Phil- or there's a, a, a community in the Philippines which has decided just to completely outlaw Dota 2 from being able to be played in <sighs> internet the, cafes. I think this is a great example that there's really little difference between sports and video games <laughs> and culture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot of people that love rooting for their teams mm-hmm. and they turn into f- factions and hooligans and they get in fights. Same thing. I just want to see... That, did that guy die? No. Did we just watch a Faces of Death video? I don't believe so. He might have. I don't think so, though. <laughs> um, I just want to go to a wing bar, right, and see a bunch of people watching StarCraft jump up and go, yeah! Actually, you know what I want? is I want to go down to a wing bar on the day... I want to take it over to the point where I can get enough tables to request some Twitch stream of StarCraft Two being played on the Sunday. I don't, if you guys don't live in a town where there's there's a football team that people are fanatical about and you don't care about football, you don't know what shitty, horrible pain is because I'm just trying to eat my wings, and apparently it's perfectly okay for people to stand up and scream at the top of their goddamn lungs when their team makes a point on Super Bowl Sunday or whatever the fuck it is. You could totally take over a bar and uh, have everyone watch, watch that Evo Live thing. I want it to be the sports bar, though. I want to take the I want to take the territory back from those meat-headed jocks. I want to watch <laughs> Street Fighter IV uh, National Championships in I'm the I'm just the wing saying, bar. you're the same as them, Jeff. Yeah. You just need to mobilize. I, no, I want to do mobilize. It. They've had time to mobilize. For I just, I'm hoping to do it to show them how stupid they are, right? <laughs> That's what I want to do, is when they see me watching a video game, and I go, yeah! And they're like, it's just a video game. Like, it's just a football game, asshole. People play football all the time. Anyway, sorry, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> that shit... Uh, pushing, it, a, pushing a it button there, really, I didn't realize. It really pisses me off. It really pisses me off when people feel it's okay to do that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. Because I'm just trying to enjoy my wings. Anyway, we're going to take a break. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have questions. I actually put a call out for questions. I didn't get that many this week. So oh, okay. We're going to kind of go through the ones that we got. We'll um, go really in-depth with your questions this week. Yeah. Uh, we might have to have just a little bit shorter than usual show. But uh, we're going to go through these questions. We'll be back momentarily. Are we going to get some wings? Oh, yeah. This is this has been a little bit more low key podcast than we normally do, Grant. It, well, thing. it's been brief. I, I guess there's just not a lot of stories, and yeah. there's really mainly one news story that was like really interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I need to. I was telling you during the break. I need to start doing stuff over the weekend. I need to like. I need a new calendar. It's just got like. Let's say I got to go on a roller coaster. You know, you need a, a bucket list. I'm gonna turn into. Is a, that what you need? To learn how to eat fire from Brian Brushwood. I don't know how that would help for the podcast. But, oh, or uh, uh, push nails from one eye to the other, like he does. Oh God, no! Does uh, he do that? Yeah. <laughs> so I, what I imagine <laughs> the trick is, is that he always is just able to keep a, a nail like tucked into one of his eyelids uh-huh. for a long period of time during his performance. Ew. Ew. It's fucked up, isn't Ew. it? Ew. I mean, yeah. I can could, I could stick my finger right in my eye all day. I mean, I have, a contact, I have contact lenses, right? So I can stick my finger in your eye. Well, I wouldn't. I would appreciate it if you did. Metaphorically. Oh, okay. Jeff sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> Ow, Grant. Well, I tell you what. I put out the call for questions. I looked over the questions we didn't get to last week. I got to tell you, folks, we're getting... We've got a little bit of uh, low question week, so... Um, you know, get your pens out. Think of something good. I, I've always wondered, is like, is this it? Is, is this it, Grant? Have they finally asked me all the questions? There's nothing else I can think of to ask you. <laughs> That's right. Is that, They're done. That's what, it. What did you think of the State of the Union? 
<laughs> it's like, uh, I don't want to talk I, about that. I on was here. watching Dragon Age, or I was playing Dragon Age. Yeah. Was on, uh, sorry. <laughs> Did you mean the Venture Brothers? Uh, that was uh, very special, yeah. Mail at rageslight.com is the email. Just, oh, you know what? I could say I watched, uh, um, I watched The Machine on Netflix. You seen that? Some lady, lady the robot machinist? machine. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just some like sci fi thing I saw a trailer for. I feel like I've right. heard about it from a couple people. It was all right. I yeah. mean, you know, nothing to write home about. I watched it while I was playing some Dark Souls, I guess. Um, yeah. And I watched, oh, I did see The Imitation Game, though, uh, which I thought was. What's The Imitation Game? Oh, you don't know. That's the uh, the Benedict uh-huh. Cumberbatch uh, movie about oh, Alan, yeah, Alan yeah, Turing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought that it was a real mixed. Like I, I have this problem where I mean, you know this, right? Is that we have so many friends that are critics that a lot of times the movies that impress them are not really the movies that would impress me. Mm. And with Alan Turing, I think that a lot of people just didn't know Alan Turing's story, and I did. Um, yeah, about the Enigma Code and Ultra and all that stuff. Um, but it was weird because it felt like they were. I really wish that that movie would have either focused on specifically Enigma, and they did to a certain degree, but more Ultra that came after that, the Ultra program. Ultron. Uh, yes, the Age of Ultron. Age yeah. of Ultron. Um, that movie's coming out in a couple months. Yeah. But they, it's like half of the movie was, was Alan Turing as a person, and the other half of the movie was the Enigma, and I kind of wish they would have focused on either one or the other. Yeah. Also, they portray Alan Turing in a way that... Uh, at least, uh, like his estate and some historians say that he, they they portray him as we see this a lot in movies these days of of like a totally um, eccentric or something like Asperger's like doesn't understand doesn't understand jokes or people's emotions or things like that is very into what he's into but just doesn't understand like normal human interaction where i was reading like there's a whole thing on wikipedia that talking about the differences and stuff and they said that like no i mean alan turing had like friends and he joked around and everybody was like hey yeah i like there's a normal dude who just also like puzzles <laughs> right and um it's really interesting i always anytime i finish a um, like a biopic or anything, the first thing I do is go see, all right, now how much of this was bullshit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it turns out there was a fair amount of the imitation game that was bullshit. I feel like that's kind of a, a drag because I feel like a lot of people are just going to watch that movie and then think that that's exactly what it was like, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that uh, Inglorious Bastards was pretty accurate, right, to history? Oh, that was a documentary. That was, okay. Yeah, yeah. Eli Roth was in World War II. You didn't, you didn't know that, he, right? He's a vampire, right? Right, yeah. That's one of the ageless. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, let's just move on. <laughs> let's move on. All right, mail at com <laughs> is the email address <laughs> if you'd like to send something in talking about how wrong i am about whatever oh also i don't know if i've talked about this before and if i have though it bears uh, repeating so on halloween i talked to somebody i'm sorry this is movie stuff and then we'll get on to the questions okay, okay. For a second. Uh, on halloween somebody was like oh yeah i totally saw that tusk movie uh the movie is terrible <laughs> don't watch it <laughs> it's fucking awful man it's just fucking awful it's You've not been funny. telling me about this tusk movie being shitty oh my god and then johnny depp shows up and he's terrible in that movie and oh it's terrible it's just terrible don't watch it also before we get into the questions i was gonna once again say hey guys go and uh vote for us for the podcast awards go yes. to the gaming section of podcastawards.com <laughs> and vote for rage select yes and uh, also go to the itunes store and uh give us a five star rating and review yes a uh, free way to help bump up uh the visibility of this podcast it really helps us out write that review as well uh, i mean it, it also helps i think it you know adds more cred to the absolutely to uh to, to rage select it totally does um, what was the other thing? Oh, Hacking the System's also back on, on uh, tomorrow night, uh, Monday. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. For episodes three and four, so be be sure to check that out again. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's going to be real Jason Murphy Monday kind of day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, here comes our first question. This one comes in from one of the many Daniels that uh, that comes onto our website. He says, hello, Rage Lords. Love the podcast, and I thought I would ask a non-gaming question tonight. Nope. Zombies! Honestly, gotten a little bored of the movies slash games slash TV shows, but there was always one thing I could not get my mind around. I see too much that the way characters, usually not main characters, die when seeing a zombie is by, one, screaming, two, offering up no resistance, three, screaming on the floor while dying. 
This always annoyed me as even though this is a scary situation, most people have a fight or flight reflex, right? My friends argue that they are so scared that they're frozen in place. I get that. I guess that is a reasonable response, but after seeing it happen so many times, I kind of want to call bullshit. What are your thoughts? Love the site. And you guys, also, what would a dong priest look like? Some sort of holy staff with a massive schlong on the end? Praise be to Dongocles. P.S. I'm going to be in the States this December. Would you guys be up for drinks on me if I visited? Cheers, Daniel. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's out of that, that, that last one. Uh, yes. In fact, there's a couple other people that are mentioning they're supposed to be in town soon. Uh, uh, get back in contact with us. So here's the thing is that um, uh, I'm really I've got a lot of balls in the air um, and you got huge balls in there. huge balls in the air. Uh, so it's good if you're in town. Um, the beginning part of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays are bad days for me. Uh, Fridays and Saturdays, I usually have some time carved out to go drink my face off. So those are good days. Like there was a guy that was in town like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday a couple weeks ago, oh, and I just couldn't couldn't kind of get. He didn't want to hang out with me, I guess. Well, that's the other thing is that the more people that you contact from Rage Select via Twitter, direct messages, or Facebook pages, or whatever, or email, or whatever, yeah, the better. And for me, I mean, I hate to be this guy, but like, if you remind me, I will definitely make a, an effort. It's just that a lot of times. What what's the name for that thing where Badger Badger you? Where, well, no, what's the name for that thing where like you get a message from somebody and you're totally going to respond to it right after you answer this other email and look at this Wikipedia page and I got to watch this episode of Friends and then I got to eat my lunch and then I have to take my dog for a walk and wasn't there supposed to like, I was supposed to be doing right now? What was that thing? I think it's it's uh, being insincere oh. <laughs> when you say you're going to respond to them. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I want to respond to everybody. <laughs> Not anyway. prioritizing? I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe. Um, and then let's see. What would a dong priest look like? I like to leave that to the imaginations of the listeners. Maybe like the guy in Manos, Hands of Fate, except giant uh, The Rio balls. de uh, Brazil. Yeah. Statue. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> put giant balls going up and down, but I don't know. Um... Okay, so the zombie question. Zombie question. Isn't it unrealistic how people are portrayed in zombie movies? I mean, it, it, that's that's just a horror trope that uh, that the victim's going to scream because that elicits a response from the viewer. I mean, you you freak out, your heart starts pumping, you sympathize for the the person that's in in horror and in agony, and you you share that horror, but. Is it realistic? Uh, no. I, no, it's not. No, <laughs> it is not realistic. In fact, it's funny because I was actually thinking about this when I was... Uh, so Grant got me turned on to this Hardcore History podcast, right? Yeah. And so I've been listening to the World War One stuff in the Hardcore History podcast, right? And and the descriptions of what World War One was like in the trenches are some of the most horrifying things I've ever it heard in my life. horror. And you look at that and you go, human beings were able to endure this in a fashion, I don't know, but it, it makes you wonder, like, is it just that everybody in zombie movies are a bunch of pussies? Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's a there's a battle roar which I think is very common. I think when you're fighting someone, you will very much yell out, yeah, and, and just like a, a form of aggression, a, a, a shout, uh, yeah, a battle roar, but uh, a scream, yeah. I don't I, do I, that. <laughs> I guess that I guess the real question is just the is that he's posing is. It seems like if you were faced with something that was trying to eat your face off, yeah. you would either try to punch it to death or run the fuck away. The last thing you would do is just stand there and go, oh, God, oh, God, it's oh, God. God. It's getting closer. <laughs> it's closer still. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, yeah, I agree. But then I think there's a whole bunch of things. I mean, I've been on record a million times before of like the zombie, the tropes of zombie movies to me are completely ridiculous like most of them are completely ridiculous the way that people turn on each other is completely ridiculous the fact that we lose to a to a bunch of animals that have no intelligence or self-preservation skills is ridiculous to me like this is the stupidest thing i've ever heard in my life yeah stand on the other side of a big pit zombie problem solved <laughs> like they're gonna run towards you and they're gonna fall into the big get the grand canyon they're, they're dumb guys these zombies are dumb they're dumb if we cannot outsmart the walking dead we deserve to be eaten yeah yeah if you stand there going ah ah 
<laughs> it's getting closer. Uh, higher <laughs> pitch. <laughs> then yes, you deserve to get your fucking ass eaten. Like yep. yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I really am waiting for the next. I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for somebody. I think that it's time, Grant. Oh yeah, I think it's time. I think it's time for somebody to make the zombie movie that 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 takes all this bullshit off the table. That says that. Um, that just takes all of the dumb zombie tropes that we have developed and just wipes them off the table and makes a new revolutionary zombie movie that says um, it's th- th- where I, s- I I think Stephanie Myers could do it. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like good. she upgraded the vampire <laughs> genre. Right. She saved it. Yeah. Add a little sparkle to yeah, it. Yeah. She brought it to the next level. Right. Yeah. Where it needed to be. <laughs> and the werewolf genre. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, uh, the creepy pedophile genre, I guess. I mean, like, what, it's like an old dude hitting on a little teenager, right? Why can't you make a movie that's about the zombie apocalypse where when the zombie apocalypse happens, and and please, for the love of God, people, don't go into the comments and tell me this isn't true because I know it's not true, where people band together and work together and fight the zombie apocalypse. It doesn't have to be always the exact same story of the zombies won and now we've got these little enclaves or whatever. Yeah, You can take a, a city... And and fight for it against the zombie horde, defeat the zombie horde, and that could be a really entertaining movie, right? It Isn't doesn't have uh, to be like uh, every time there's a, one zombie, we're all fucked, right? What was the one uh, day after tomorrow? Is that the one where it's like uh, uh, twenty eight days later? Twenty eight days later. Unless yeah. you're talking about the cold day air that's tomorrow. running at them. And day Remember after. the zombie uh, <laughs> cold freeze that came in? <laughs> the zombie temperature. <laughs> zombie temperature. <laughs> ah! 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 <laughs> Jake, just just close the door. Ah! Oh, oh, yeah, okay. just right. <laughs> close the door. That was fine. That was easy, actually. Um, yeah, but twenty days later, they're like running from all those zombies, and it turned out that they were just they that they happened Britain to was be bad at in, zombies. No, like they they that was like the one area they closed off, and everywhere else was fine. They were able to yeah. fight off all the zombies. Yeah, yeah. Spoiler, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. I, I, it's an I, old I ass hate movie. That now. movie so much. I hate it so much. Everybody loves it. But he's a bike messenger, and those guys are fucking like special forces dudes. I know they're crazy and rapey, and D- Doctor Who is in with them and whatever. But like, he's a bike messenger. Like, did I? It was there a point? It, when was the last time you watched that movie? Was there a point where they explained how this guy is able to murder a bunch of special ops people who have been trained to kill other people when he just gets all pissy about? Infected. Oh. I don't remember this movie enough. Okay, like all of a sudden you're saying all this, yep. I'm like, the fuck? I'm pretty what sure it's been. About? Okay, I only watched it once. I didn't like it. I also didn't like in the second one where they let people back in. Right, they've got these apartment blocks. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. So I never in, saw that one in the second one, in 28 weeks later, right, they have this contingency plan for the military where if there's a zombie outbreak, they take everybody and they make them all go down to this underground garage and stand there. Yeah. All together. In a situation where if one person gets it's infected, they can thing, infect yeah. other people. And but I'm like, all you had to do is reinforce their doors with like iron so that the infected couldn't get through them, and then just have them lock the door to their apartment, and the problem was solved. If I could figure out how to beat your dumbs up, okay, we got to move on <laughs> to the next question. Seriously, guys, in like off time when we're like having a smoke break or something, mm. Jeff will go mm. off on these tirades about this. <laughs> okay, hilarious. here we go. All right, our next one comes in from Andre, who says, "Hello, holy men of the dong. This is Andre from Ecuador. With Arkham Knight being the end of the Arkham series, I wanted to ask you." What would be the next comic book series you would like to see? And also, what game mechanism uh, would you add to make it as good as the Batman games have been? A singing Green Lantern game combined with Scribble Knots would be good. Ooh. You could, from the get go, create anything you want with your ring. Maybe there's a limit to time or durability depending on your current uh, level. But as you level up, you can uh, make your creations le- last longer, be less affected by the color yellow, etc. Also, if you could add a character creator similar to Spore or Saints Row, let you uh, create your own lantern would be nice. Green Lantern Loretta would be more terrifying than Parallax, though. Anyway, keep up the good work. Thank you for the hours of entertainment. Andre from Ecuador. Ecuador? That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, his scribble knots, uh Green Lantern idea? Also really cool sounding. I think it would it'd probably probably primarily have to be like a Wii U game though, right? Because I, it, it would probably have to have simpler, more playful graphics just so that they could do it easier. I guess if they had like a spore creator, some kind of easy thing where you could like pick a, a type and then make different things that you could then call up in combat, that could be interesting. Yeah. 
Um, I've always been. I've always sat around and said. There is, to me, no good reason not to have a good Superman game out there. Um, you can make a Superman game where, I mean, people say people constantly say, "Oh, well, that would be boring because Superman's invincible." But that's not necessarily didn't have to be the thing. I mean, I've I think that you could get Superman to a point where you take enough damage, and I mean, I've always said it's not Superman beating up muggers, right? It's Superman taking on Dark Side. It's Superman taking on Brainiac. It's Superman taking on Cosmic style threats so if you had a game that was like arkham city except instead of arkham city you're flying between different planets you know in the universe doing your superman shtick yeah i think that'd be really cool plus i think maybe that- he has to have like a morale meter yeah and it's like when he all of a sudden he just feels like a little bit too hopeless like maybe some people weren't, aren't supporting him enough he goes meh or you know what <laughs> and he craps out <laughs> and that's the superman, sound that he makes fucking baby like, up meh. up at uh Man. I'm just going to go eat potato chips on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> but Superman can eat a lot of potato chips. Uh, I also think that a Flash game would be I was really just cool. thinking, Flash would be awesome. Like, yep. imagine, oh, there's like five different like little outbreak crimes around the city, mm-hmm. and you only have this much time. Can you try and run and solve each one? And it's it's just like this this evolution where you have to keep trying and keep trying and trying different combinations, and maybe you have to go to certain uh, crimes in a certain sequence in order to figure out, like, which ones you can de- diffuse in time? That would be really cool. It's like a puzzle game where you can actually fully stop time, essentially, because the Flash can run so fast, right? Yeah. His perception could stop time, but it's like, it's not necessarily about can you do the right combo on this guy to beat him up. It's about you only, like, you can't rewind time. You can yeah. stop time, but sh- once it moves forward, like, if y- you've got two people that are being shot at at the same time, right? You can only mess you can only save one of them or like like you said multiple things or i mean that could really work with all the flash rogues gallery right we were talking about before um or well, i was talking about with you last night on the tv dudes about like each one of those villains has a different set of things that could potentially screw the flash up right yeah. uh that could totally work yeah i think there's i mean i think there's a ton of superhero games i i've constantly said that with the amount of work that they're putting into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there's no reason not to have a bunch of great games. I mean, uh, Iron Man has had two really shitty games. I'm like, how goddamn hard is it to make an Iron Man game? He's a guy in a robot suit that shoots lasers, right? Yeah. I, how many good games have I played that's a guy in some kind of mecha suit shooting lasers at stuff? But who's who's typically his, his villain base? I mean, he's not going after street thugs. Mandarin. Fing Fang Foom. I mean, he would have to go after like like cross the planet and like fight these big villains. Right? Well, I mean, you could. I don't know. I mean, I think that that the way that the in the current Iron Man movie set is right, he seems to be mostly up against like weird militant regimes, right? So you've got yeah the well um, the Whiplash robot army, and you've got the Mandarins terrorist army, and you've got, I don't know. I mean, Man, I'll still say it. I loved the X Men Legends games. Mm hmm. Uh, or at least the first two. That Marvel. Those Le- are the top down ones, right? Where yeah. it's like you get, you collect all the different Marvel heroes and yeah. you put them all together. You can level up the costumes and mm-hmm. po- abilities. Um, I, I thought it was fun. It, it was kind of a little bit uh, like KOTOR as well. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think that you could totally put together. In fact, it would be it would probably be really easy if you wanted to, if you didn't want to spend a lot of time on the individual games to just make an Avengers game, right? Because yeah. each individual character would have a different set of powers, so it would be fresh gameplay every time you switch between them, right? And there's enough of the take, different things. Take Hulk and make a rampage game with Hulk, right? You just run down the street. Like, oh, oh, Hulk and Superman can just just destroy buildings, and like, who can destroy the most buildings back and forth? <laughs> It'd be great, like Hulk Ultimate Destruction. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know why it's again. They've they've put so many. You know, you don't make a really good video game, Grant. What Blade? Blade would make an excellent video game. Yeah, I mean, you just chop it up, vampires. He's got its swords and gadgets. He's Going like to blood Batman. raves. Right. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Blade would make an excellent video game. L- like dealing with Ryan Reynolds' hilarious quips with a frown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the fun things you can do with Blade. <laughs> uh, that threw me for a second because you said Ryan Reynolds and my brain immediately <laughs> filled it in with Deadpool. Deadpool yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, you could totally make a good X-Men game. Which, uh, segue real quick, Dead Deadpool. Yeah. It's so awesome they're filming that. I guess they're filming it up in Vancouver. Uh, the Deadpool game that came out, I think it was last year, was really good. I liked oh, it yeah? Quite a bit, yeah. 
I think it, I read the script early on, the Deadpool script a while back, and I wonder if that's the same one they're going to go with. It. Oh, the, oh, for the movie? Yeah. Is now, are a, they doing the CGI thing like they did in the, the con- Proof of Concept, or are they doing Guy in a Suit? I, don't know, I, I think he'll be in the suit for some of it, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure how much they're going to do. I mean, they're going to do all his ridiculous stunts. It kind of makes sense to just go with CGI, right? Yeah. I don't know. I still will never forgive whoever it was that covered up his mouth in the freaking X-Men Origins. Uh, how, why would you do that? Why would you do that, person? The whoever you are. move. <laughs> it's like giving, making Wolverine without claws or something. Right. No, he took his claws off. Um, all right. So uh, any, any other things that stand out for you? No, I, I thought we covered some pretty good ones. Plastic Man. Um, I think you could make a good... I honestly think you could make a good video game out of any any character uh i was also thinking i'd like to visit uh ecuador at some point okay yeah. well andre we could hit, hit grant up and yeah. <laughs> tell him where the, the hot places to go in ecuador are yeah, let me know all right the next one comes in from tristan who says dear jeff and grant the dong lord has given me a small blessing as i have found a local bar that serves lone star now let's just stop for a second <laughs> i feel like again there's a, a time and a place where people are like, I really want to come to Austin and drink Lone Star and go to gyms. And I'm like, these are the <laughs> cheapest things in Austin. <laughs> Lone Star's t- t- terrible beer. Uh, you somehow <laughs> made it like enticing to people. I, it's it's just, shame on you for doing such a thing. It's because they don't have it wherever they live, right? It, it's it's one step above PBR, right? Or equal to, in some people's minds. It's like us wanting to go to Ireland and kiss the Blarney Sun or something. Right, it's right. It's like, oh, that thing that like the locals piss on? Do you want to kiss that? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I hope that, I mean, Tristan, I hope that you're not paying more than about two bucks for <laughs> every Lone Star. Yeah. Uh, okay, now to my questions. Uh, one from me and one from my brother who I've converted into a Rage Select listener. Good Woo. job. Um, wow. He's in his first year of college and asks, given how easy it is to enter college, what kind of courses should schools not have or have removed as they are a waste of resources? Examples, uh, an art class needing to, uh, okay, I'm assuming he's saying an art degree needing to take psychology or a vet student needing to take history. Uh, and then his question, I'm leveling my paladin in WoW, trying to get a certain follower for a toy item. Uh, Wayfarer's Bonfire, and I'm having some trouble motivating myself. Yes, this toy item can be obtained from talking to another player that already has that follower, but I do like earning things myself. What tips and tricks do you have to grind through a game? Uh, Do you use to grind through a game? Thanks for reading my questions, and praise unto you, the classiest website on the internet, your follower, Tristan. P.S. Grant, love the Hacking the System trailer that you did. (laughs) 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 yeah Yeah. oh jason's laugh (laughs) it's so ridiculous um take that guy down a notch (laughs) um uh so you can let's start with that second question you can answer that one right because i can't (laughs) it's hard i recommend um if you have to play something that is that that you really don't want to which at this point I mean, I'm, I don't know. Your reasons are your own for why you're doing this to yourself. I mean, I have my own reasons for why I do it to myself. But I find that a lot of times if you're in a part where you just have repetitive gameplay, where you don't have anything specific that keeps you interested, set up a TV, get a second monitor, watch something. Watch a season of Star Trek on Netflix while you're playing the game, right? Mm. And whenever you can just look to that side and just kind of run the game on autopilot, do that. Because honestly, if a thing isn't getting your attention... There's this is kind of the crux of a lot of fanboy arguments I've had over the years. There's no way to make somebody about excited about a thing that they're genuinely not excited about, right? Is we had a last week on Sequential Saturday, I guess we had a whole argument break out about people who thought the Avengers was stupid and they didn't like it and blah 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 blah. Because we asked for it, I think, in the comments. Yeah, that's fine. And the thing is that if you don't like the Avengers, I can uh, all I would say to you is like uh, that's kind of a shame. I enjoyed it, but I can't. You can't make somebody like what they don't like. People have been trying to do it to me for years, and it doesn't work. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I even engaged in the, the discussion, but I, I, yeah, I mean, I fully admit it's like, you don't like it, you don't like it. But yeah, for, here's from my perspective the things you had an issue with, I interpreted it this way. Yeah. If that makes you like it, cool. If not, whatever. I don't well. know if I've ever actually encountered an argument between people that ended in somebody being like, Oh, yeah, now I like it. Oh, I didn't understand. Oh, that's brilliant. Now I love it, right? Like, I mean, I feel I've been in those a lot. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm just 
a little bit more flexible where you know, I, I'll, I'll have uh, someone kind of point something out and I'll be like, oh, actually. Are you calling me inflexible? Is that what you're saying? Yes, I think you're very stubborn <laughs> and inflexible. <laughs> but I've, I've changed my mind a lot on, on things. I, th- I think when someone reasons a good argument, I go, oh. Fair enough. Okay, you know what? Uh, Yeah, I take that back because there's been a number of times where I'll go back to something. A lot Mm. of times it's not good to to do it right away, but like I'll try something I won't like it, uh, be it music, books, food, games, whatever. I mean, the reason that I talk about Obsidian a lot of times is a company that I don't really like all that much that a lot of other people really, really do like. And I've gone back to try to play all of their games four or five times because people keep telling me like, no, I love them. And I go back and I go, let me give this a shot, see if I like it. Nope, still don't like it. Uh, but then there's been other stuff that I have that I've gone back and enjoyed more over time. Our buddy Martin, I used to work with the guy, and uh, he and I would talk about movies all the time. And I'd come, I'd come out of watching some movie and be like, man, I'd be shitty about it. And he'd be like, what about this? And they'd be like, oh, cool. Yeah. Or I'd be like, oh, man, that was really cool. And he'd be like, did you think about this and this and this? And I'd be like, oh, man, I get. <laughs> Yeah. That one's the worst one. I, I the guess, other one is good. Is like yeah. Is, is I, I like when also it's like oh, but did you think of it in this this other perspective? And it's like oh, it makes it better. But yeah, maybe Prometheus was dumb. <laughs> maybe it was a dumb movie, and I happened to like it the first time I watched it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> have you gone back and watched Lost Again, Grant? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, have, and uh, it's fucking great. Uh, um. Okay, let's go to that first question, eh? Uh, yeah, the first question I thought was interesting, and I don't under... I mean, I think that this gives me a perfect excuse for a Jeff tirade, but... Uh, <laughs> um, have that. I mean, have you? did you go to college? Yeah. Okay. I went to UT. So what did you major in? Uh, design. Okay. So I did, did you, ha- I, I did do did the take art all degree. that bullshit, uh, I history, mean, math. I, n- I didn't necessarily consider it bullshit. I think it's... I think there's a good value to anyone being a member of society to have a fairly well-rounded education and at least have a certain idea and concepts of certain elements. Um, but, yeah, there's there's still electives for me to like choose which uh, remedial class, or which psychology, or which history right. class I kind of took. And some of them I think I chose poorly what I ended up taking. Yeah. Um, I just, I mean, I went to... I still have like seventy five percent of a animation degree that I never finished because I got a job, right? Yeah. Um, but I think I personally think that that's horseshit for higher for higher education anyway, right? And it would be one thing if those classes were comped to you from the college, right? But if you say you're going into school for design and you're paying for every class that you take, and they won't give you a degree unless you take some bullshit psychology class. Like to me, that's just padding out the bill, right? Is that I can, and I understand what you're saying. It's just that um, it, it seems like a waste of time in this particular day and age. Like, I, I feel like there are probably certain um, like reasons and provisions that they initially had to do this. I, I not not to discount like the the integrity and reputation of the the school was at stake for the the type of students that they put out to right. graduate from their their place and they they don't want them to just have a, an education that's solely focused on one thing um, but in addition I think there's probably an issue of um, holding certain professors on retainer and you need to make sure that you do have students that attend their class and if it's a certain year a lot of people are going gearing their education toward one thing and not another they still would want to make sure i mean then that in that that That's regard not my problem grant in that regard it is bullshit <laughs> yeah but it is your problem if you've chosen to attend that establishment i mean right. that school well that's and i mean that's part of their requirements I, as far as i know most of the places i mean most of the places that i've ever heard of of higher education that's how they treat it right yeah i honestly i honestly labor or, or i honestly think that um the way that education is set up in this country is fundamentally just broken, just broken in a lot of ways. And I, mean, I think I, that that I understand where that idea came from. But the thing is that I've just read so many news stories over the last five years of people who are coming out of college with crippling amounts of debt and no job to go into. Oh, absolutely. And you go, if you it's could, bad now, if you could cut that debt by 20 or 30 percent by excising classes which had nothing to do with what the person was interested in, which in a lot of cases, I mean, I'd be interested to know statistics of like, 
okay, so you have to take an English class. So they offer some watered down bullshit English class for you to take just to hit that elective. The student doesn't want to take it. It's not a real in depth class. The professor doesn't want to the teach it. Probably doesn't <laughs> want not, to teach it's it. It's not their passion. It's their remedial, yeah. remedial one. So why? I mean, you're only making them take it out of a sense of tradition. I mean, I, I guess I. I mean, yeah, I I agree uh, on that. It's interesting as well. I mean, I joked earlier about like, oh, let's talk about the State of the Union. But in the State of the Union, uh, Obama did bring up, which he had, he had actually proposed, uh, I think, a week ago as well, mm. that he wanted to change a lot of the education system that all community colleges would offer a free two-year program to anyone who wants it. Yep. And he's really pushing for this. And I mean... It comes with stipulations that you have to make sure that you complete your degree in time sure. and that you uh, um, get great grades throughout the whole thing. Sure. So you have to do these things. You have to actually work your ass off to do it. But free higher education, free highest like highest education in college, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's kind of an awesome thing. And I, I think that should definitely happen. He said like 40% of people who attend higher education uh, do community college. Yeah, so I, I, I I did, and 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 the debt, like you were saying, is astronomical it's right insane. now. Insane. The like, you and it, will, it would be one thing if if you could go to college and come out the other side and be assured a job, right? Exactly. But you're not, so you've accrued a huge amount of debt for no tangible benefit. Uh, I mean, and, and the university I went to, UT, uh, they continue to increase tuition, and what are they doing with their money? They're Built, building like extraneous facilities. It's like, why do we need an extra gym? Why do we need all these extra like swimming pools in there and all this other shit? Yep. That's where you're putting your money. They built an, an additional, um, it's called the Union, but what, what, like a, a community uh, restaurant center uh, villa for like students to hang out at. Yep. They didn't need that second one. It's just they keep raising, I mean, lower your tuition. Yeah, <laughs> help the other students out. See that there's a problem right now with our education system, and be part of the a solution. Absolutely. So yeah, percent. I think those it classes sucks. are bullshit. Uh, and at ACC, it's weird because I had a. I I mean, I went there for animation because mm -hmm. they had a very good workman like program. Right, that was not. You go to take art classes, and you got to worry sometimes about like, oh, paint your feelings, right? And this was like, how do you draw Bugs Bunny? I'm going to teach you how to draw Bugs Bunny and, and animate him, right? Um, but what they had there was uh, they had, if you just took all the art classes, you could get what was called a certificate, right? Mm. But then if you took like another, um, another six, four, four to six uh, of those bullshit classes, then you could get a degree. And it was like, well, I want the degree, but I don't want to have to, I don't want to take some remedial math class just to get that. I mean, don't I deserve a degree just from having done and but I, I mean, once again, I'll, I'll go back to a degree has to. I, I think it has to mean more than you just having a sole focus on a single thing. I mean, employers when they look at a uh, uh, you having a degree from a place, they they have an expectation that you you do have a a rounded education that you you don't just know design. I disagree with that intensely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's it, it's an assumption based on the fact that that that's just common practice that you do have to take the other classes. Uh, see, I guess the thing is that for me, I feel like all those classes like they don't make you a more or better well-rounded person. I don't think you're getting better math. In, Not a better person, or well, it, I don't I don't think you're getting math in in the remedial math class that you have to take to check the box in college. Than you were getting in your thing, you should have been getting in your senior year of high school. But at least I don't know what people's high schools are like now. But when I was in high school and I, my senior year, I was taking pre calculus. Yeah. So when I go to take that math class in college to fulfill that requirement, that's like algebra one essentially, like with some geometry yeah. mixed in. I was it. able to test out of uh, a couple different things because I decided to do an art degree. Yeah. It was like, oh yeah, take this test, and if you pass it, I didn't have to take any math at all. I didn't have to do any science at all because I just tested out of that shit, and I was like, sweet. <laughs> I think it's pleasing. But all right, here's our next one. This one comes in from Nathan. Nathan says, hi, Jeff and Grant. Been a long fan since the old days. and love everything that goes on over at Rage Select. Thank you. Uh, my question to you is, can you think of any other DLC that has not only expanded the potential of the existing story of the game itself, but has also improved the game marginally? For example, XCOM Enemy uh, Inside. I don't know if it's different 
was there a different one? Okay, no. For adding mech suits and human enemies or Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon for being a total conversion that kicked more ass than Far Cry 3 originally did. Thanks for answering my question. If you do, I mean, the great Lord Dong rain down his creamy white blessings upon you. Oh, uh, Nathan, <laughs> I don't know if this is Gouljoss or Gulas, uh from down under. So apparently from uh, uh, Australia. So, um, oh, I thought that was Mexico. I They're actually underneath think us. He, oh, is that <laughs> He's a cave dweller actually. He's just a chud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sex chuds. Um I it's interesting. I uh do you have any anything uh, I I don't think I have the knowledge base to answer this uh, with any authority like you would. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with a lot of DLC. I think that um Mass Effect all the Mass Effect DLC, Mass Effect 2, and even 3 to a certain degree, did a really good job of expanding the lore in that universe. Especially 3, that Leviathan DLC, and some of the whatever the first one was with the ancient guy in it, uh, really did expand that universe a little bit more than it was in the beginning. Um, I hate to go back to my... I hate to go back to... Uh, Dark a, Souls. Dark Souls, a standby, <laughs> right? But when Artorias of the Abyss came out, that DLC took you back before the events of the game to show you some things that really tied into the plot quite a bit. And even the the crowns um, in the Dark Souls 2, the three DLC packs they put out for Dark Souls 2, uh, those were some of the best levels in the game. I really enjoyed them, and they added a lot to the story. And there's actually a video online that kind of shows the implications of that stuff. But, you know, there's a lot. There's, a, there's just a ton of DLC out there that's great. Uh, in Skyrim, uh, there was the... All the Skyrim DLC I thought was really good. I mean, there was one of them that gave you... Hearthfire gave you a house that you could build and you could adopt kids to run around in and you could plant stuff and do stuff. Nice. Dragon, Dragonborn, was that the one? Dragonfire or whatever? Gave you access to a chunk of... Um, uh, Morrowind, and you could ride a dragon, right? Like, uh, I thought the Bioshock DLCs were interesting as a kind of an alternate universe spinoff look at some other way that that could have gone. I mean, in all honesty, most DLCs from from companies that are good is good. It's, yeah. it's just when they're offering you hats and skin packs or, like, the... Uh, I, you know what it really comes down to is if it's for a game that I want to play more of, then it's great. Well, some people love those skin packs and those uh, hats and shit, though, right? I think those are well, but I I would not put those in the answer to the question. Oh of, yeah, yeah. You know things that made the game better. Uh, um, I mean, if you were talking about TLC, I would totally say that No Scrubs right. was a great follow up okay. uh, song that brought back relevance to the band uh-huh. after Waterfall. Okay, so. I uh, mean, and then they had the hilarious uh, uh, parody, No Pigeons. Right. You remember that song? Wasn't, wasn't I don't want no pigeon. Wasn't, <laughs> didn't Waterfalls <laughs> come after after No Scrubs? No, Waterfalls was one of their first hits. Okay. And then No Scrubs was uh, a later. Okay. Later. Um, That's just... what I have to add to the conversation, <laughs> folks. You're welcome. Oh, right. That was the one that I thought of before. Uh, um, uh, Red Dead. Undead Nightmare. Oh. Uh, one of the greatest DLCs of all time. Dude, that was awesome. Yeah, it right? the entire game. Uh, and also, uh, Saints Rose had some good, really good DLCs, and so is Grand Theft Auto. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of them. It's just any game that's not shitty that has DLC that's not an obvious cash grab, like Horse Armor. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with it these days. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks for the question, dude. So next one comes in from Renee, who says, Hey, guys. Hope all is well. My question is... What are your thoughts on the upcoming Mass Effect game? Uh, what things do you hope are in it, and what don't you want in it? Also, do you think it will be a prequel or years after the first Mass Effect series? Thanks for answering my question, and all hail the dong, Rene. Uh, did, we, did you play any Mass Effect games? I haven't. You haven't played any of them? No. Oh, they're so good. I'm so unfamiliar down. with this series. Why am I on here? I'm sorry. I... I uh, you know, the, the problem with Mass Effect is that 2 is the best of the three games, and the first one has these long sequences of driving this dumb truck around on empty, marg- mostly empty planets. Um, or else, 
I don't know. There's a part of me that wants to go back. I think they're doing another. I think I've got all three of the games on my PC. That's a long sequential, though. <laughs> oh man. Do you do you know what uh, the next one's going to be? No. Well, the thing is that the Mass Effect was a trilogy, and at the end of the trilogy, at Mass Effect Three, they really kind of put the nail in the uh, part of. Okay, uh, m- minor spoilers. I'm not going to go into character stuff, but in Mass, the whole kind of. Uh, uh, hinge the crux of Mass Effect, right? Is that humanity finds these giant things in space that are like these giant mass slingshots that can shoot you to other parts of the galaxy. And when they find this first one, they go through it. And I'm probably mangling the hell out of story, but this is the general stuff. And they find that there's a whole universe full of aliens that all have met each other, right? That they these Mass Effect gates are around, and people will take them between different systems. And there's a thing called the Citadel, where all the it's like the UN of of uh, aliens. So human uh, uh, technology advances from contact with these aliens, and then this takes place a little bit later in the future. Well, at the very end of the franchise, they no matter what you do, um, those transport hubs get destroyed, and that's the only way in the universe that you're able to go above light speed. You know, to get quickly between different areas of the galaxy. Yeah. So the question I think a lot of times is. Is the next game going to be set before Mass Effect so that – because there's a bunch of stuff that happened before the, those games kicked off uh, so that you can still have that or is it set – that's why uh, Renee is saying, was it, is it going to be a prequel or is it going to be way later? Because then the other thing is if you go out you know, 100 years past that, then the universe – they know there's other people out there. They develop some kind of new form of travel or whatever. Sure. Okay. Um, but they've announced it. I don't know. I would like to see – I'm tired of prequels, really. I mean, I I don't know that many prequels that come out that I'm interested in. Movies, books, video games, I don't Especially care what it is. Especially if you're following uh, this from Earth's perspective, it sounds like the first one sort of kicks off with the discovery, right? Where do you no, go no, before no, no. that? The first one kicks off like hundreds of years after that discovery. Oh, okay. When w- the big moment in there is that the you, that the Earth has built this this ship and that the ship has your character on it, who is basically made like a kind of an interstellar cop, kind of like a Green Lantern sort of, like the first human to be inducted into the Green Lantern Corps, and then you get wrapped up in this big thing that's happening in the universe. Okay. Right? Um, but no, there's like there's several wars and different things that happen between species that are referenced beforehand that could totally be fertile ground for a prequel. Um, but I I don't like retreading. I don't, I, do, I don't like prequels. I just don't like them very much. Like It takes a lot for a prequel to me to be anywhere near as good as, um, as the original or a sequel. Yeah. Um, I like to advance those stories forward. So. Interestingly, uh, you know Better Call Saul, that, that uh, prequel follow-up to Breaking Bad? Breaking Bad, yeah. Uh, I've been reading on a lot of sites that it's actually really good. Really? Yeah. Well, that's that's they, they, they've watched the first couple episodes and they're like, uh, wow, that's cool. actually different. I could see, you know, if you had um, like a prequel game to the Mass Effect series that wasn't the same style of game that could work. Because I think isn't Better Call Saul going to be a comedy, right? Um, I think it's going to be a little bit more comedic. Okay, but I I think it'll still have a very heavy drama element. Is it just gonna be? Is it just gonna be that Saul has cancer? Is that it? <laughs> is that I I do think it's, it's another uh, character evolution study. Okay. Uh, where he's he's starting off as a certain type of of lawyer before he eventually becomes Saul Goodman. Can that guy play like a <laughs> like in fresh out of law school? I've got the best interest of the people at heart. <laughs> like I don't know if I could. Who's that guy? Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk. Mr. Show guy. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I could see him playing an upright like citizen. Yeah, right? I don't think like, they can de-age him that well either. No, I, I, from what I heard, uh, he he starts off. He has a different name uh, in the beginning before he changes it to uh, what I, I'm Goodman. guessing it's a marketing thing or whatever. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, uh, he he starts off not being like a criminal, but he's still. A little shady in his practices. Yeah, he, he's kind of more of a a, a prankster, I guess, or a, you know, okay, a con man. Uh, but to answer Renee's question, yeah, I like sorry. to see it. I like to see it go further out. I definitely like that. I like it to be a, pr- a sequel, not a prequel, even if it's a hundred years later or whatever. Mostly because they can't even. They got to get. I feel like they need to distance themselves from the Shepard character. Um, I also think that. Uh, 
I like to see um uh um I'd like to see them do more with the, the exploration uh because by the time they got to the third game the flying your ship between different places in the universe was just this little mini game where you had a little ship that you flew around and then you would go down to a place. I'd like to see it a little bit more open ended than that, uh more expansive areas. But I don't know. I mean, BioWare, they did a pretty good job with Dragon Age. I'll tell you what I want to see more than anything. BioWare's gotten away for years with this horse shit of they can't put the weapons in the hands of their characters very well. Dragon Age does it, too, where um, it seems like they're not holding anything. It seems like it's just a sword that's floating in the middle of their hand. Ah. And they're not really... Or they'll, like, they'll, they'll point with a sword in a, in a gesture that's just completely ridiculous. I think they need to up their animation game. That's what I really hope gets done in the next game. But I don't know. I'm interested in seeing it. I hope there's more at E3 this year. All right, we got two more questions, one longer, one shorter, and then we're done. First all one right. comes in from Matt. Matt says, hi, Jeff and Grant. With all the re-releases and HD releases and super-duper releases of old, old games, would you rather studios make new games you might like or go back and just remake games you have liked in the past? Cheers and love the show. Keep up with all the amazing and look forward to seeing you sweep the podcast awards. Yeah. Woo! Podcastawards.com gaming. Matt. Uh, yeah, we are going to whoop Rooster Teeth's ass. Take that. That's right. Or maybe get nominated. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. Uh. Um, I know my answer. Do you know yours? Uh, new. New you, games, of course. Yeah. I, uh, I already played that. I, I'm Curious to know if anybody out there is really interested in seeing more of this stuff. I mean, keep I'm, making new stuff. Yep. I'm excited when they put out a game that I really like, right? Like when Saints Row came out this week, I'm like, hey, good, an excuse to put in Saints Row. But I'm always interested in adaptations as well. Um, just just straight uh, remakes or uh, like. Uh, reboots. Re- not, I mean, not reboots so much as like um, upgrades, I guess. Oh, okay. Quality upgrades. Yeah. Uh, Eh, that's okay. I I I, I played it though. <laughs> I mean, I think it's really easy, right? I mean, if I, you know what? This is the question I want to put to the people that have listened, continue listening, uh, that are listening at this point. Is do any of you guys like the huge amounts of these things that are coming out? Do any of you guys look on this as? And if you are, if you do like these things, is it just because? Like, um, you never got a chance to play these games in the last generation. Now you're getting a chance to play them, and they look a lot better. Because uh, I can see or you that. L- or you liked playing it then. You want to go through the experience with better graphics. Maybe so. But for me, there is no greater joy t- in my world than playing something I haven't played before for the first time and being impressed by it. Yeah, the fresh experience. Right. Like that Resident Evil that we did last week, right? It was fine. Nothing wrong with it. But it's 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 Resident Evil, right? It's what ten twenty year old game or whatever. Yeah. Um. You know, I'd rather see I'd rather see a new shitty Resident Evil that I could spend an hour pooping on on the dojo than just play Resident Evil yet again. So I'd rather get Star Wars Seven than have another release of George Lucas's newly remastered Star Wars: A New Hope CGI with more Jar Jar Binks, whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you see that guy? Have you, uh, some guy cut the <laughs> Hobbit trilogy oh, yeah, down to yeah, four yeah. hours? I, I, I saw that someone did that, and I, I, had a, I had a message our friend Peter. I was like, what, what, I looked at some you? of the comments on there, and apparently they've got some um, some issues with the music in there because it'll swell <laughs> into <laughs> scenes and then, you know, not <laughs> match up. Yeah. Right, yeah. But I think that's a great idea because, um, the movies are entirely too long. Yes. <laughs> Chop it down. Uh, all right. Our final question comes in from Kiros, who has a, a bit of a conundrum, a moral conundrum, Grant. Okay. He says, would you rather have Nicolas Cage within one meter of you at all times or have to spend every weekend with the Duck Dynasty crew? Oh, I my would- God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You've broken Grant's brain, Kiros. Uh, I guess I would take Nicolas Cage. Yep, me too. One I don't meter. see the downside of having Nicolas Cage within one meter of you at all times. I, mean, I guess that's about that far, right? Yeah. I'd have the greatest, I'd have the podcast of the century, right? No matter where I went, Nicolas Cage would have to follow me, so he'd have to be on every episode of Rage Select. My, In fact, I could just make the, I could, he could take over the show for me. My, my love life might go a little weird. No, you just <laughs> it might get a little weird. Just what is this uh 
Is he like by Stop in- looking at me, Nick? <laughs> is by invisible force where it's like you put him in the bathroom and close the door, and then you walk forward and you hear him just like he just <laughs> rams up against the door. Like, okay, that's as far as I can come, honey. Come over here. <laughs> right, we got to do it here. <laughs> right, right next to the wall. Yep, Nick, put your headphones on. Headphones. Put your headphones on, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Sleeping in bed, he has to sleep on the ground next to me. Yeah. Or more likely, it's Nick Cage, and I'm constrained to his world. Right. So I have to go wherever he is, and I'm only a meter Dude, away. are you kidding me? That would be awesome. So in every movie where he's, like, running, I have to be, like, also running right next to him. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> let's also get away from this. <laughs> like they have to CGI you out of, of Nicolas Cage yeah. in every movie. Yeah. Uh, the, the weather and gorillas are chasing us, Nick. We got to run. <laughs> I think it'd be great, man. I think you'd be able to be... You'd be able to go anywhere. Actually, you know, it'd be great because uh, Nicolas Cage. Uh, it depends on who gets to drive, obviously, right? Is <laughs> does Nicolas Cage just have no choice and can't overpower me and take over my life, right? But I'm gonna make Nicolas Cage eat a lot of P. Terry's hamburgers and drink a lot of Lone Star. Be like, all right, Nick, we're drinking a lot of Lone Star. I gotta go to the bathroom now. <laughs> See, I, I feel like we need to have like a. Uh the Nick Cage, there needs to be something a little bit more enticing about the Duck Dynasty, like, or someone else. Who would who would be a little bit well, more enticing to hang out with every weekend? I think that. See, I think that what I don't think that he's putting the Duck Dynasty as an enticement. What he's saying is that with Duck Dynasty, you got five days of the week where you don't have to hang out with the Duck Dynasty guys, right? Yeah, and then you've got to hang out with them every weekend. I mean, I guess I if it was me, I'd probably get to score a lot of like loose. Uh, Learning Channel broads that are into the Duck Dynasty, a lot of I mean, racist still, ladies. You just got to hang out with them every weekend. Well, you know, I could take them to... Uh, actually, you know what? Is if It depends. If there's a magical force where they're tethered and they have to go wherever I go, and I can, like, drive them to some predominantly African-American neighborhoods in Austin and then just, to, like, eat popcorn and watch the <laughs> just fun. eat popcorn. <laughs> right. Because they're not going to want to go, but they've got to. Like it, that's the whole part of this question is it really depends on who's driving, right? If I have the control and like if I leave the bar, the Duck Dynasty guys are magically pulled along with me. That'd be great. I could put them in a whole bunch of terrible hey, scenarios. Hey, remember what that shit you said uh, earlier on your Duck Dynasty show? Right. Say it to these guys. Say it to say it to this audience. Dude, here. those guys are dude, those. You've seen it's like an old man and a bunch of uh, assholes with beards, right? Yeah. I've got a beard and I'm an asshole. All right, I got a whole bunch of assholes with beards. It's true. As well. Now, does your beard put you in jeopardy of, of uh, guilt by association with this guy? No, my beard is short. Their beards are long. Uh, so. but you might want to shave it if you're hanging out with them every week. Plus, you could trick them, right? They're stupid. You could be like, you know, the only way to break this curse is you guys got to shave off those beards. <laughs> <laughs> be like, oh, shit, it didn't work. All right. See you next weekend, suckers. All right. The only way for you to break this curse is we got to go to the gay bar and you got to sleep with like four dudes in that gay bar. Four yeah. of them. Four of them. All right. One for each Duck Dynasty asshole. And they're like, oh, shit. Yep. You don't want to dream keep, come true. You don't. <laughs> you don't want to have to keep being in this liberal cesspit, right? Where you live, you want to be able to go back to your ducks and your dynasty or whatever it is. <laughs> the ducks and the dynasty. Yeah, yeah, you know your your giant duck mansion where you Scrooge McDuck and just swim through your money. Mm-hmm. Kiros, I'll take either one. I don't care. I can see an upside to either one. I see the silver lining. I see. Uh, <laughs> I'll take Nick Cage. Okay. You can have Nick Cage, and I'll have Duck Dynasty. We can swap on weekends. It's kind of fucking terrible. I should probably take the Duck Dynasty. I think if he could be more than a meter away from you. I mean, I know this isn't real, (laughs) but I feel like I have, like, uh, a serious moral obligation to pick the best one for my life going forward. (laughs) Like... This you, could be a reality. Do Grant. you really you want your daughter exposed to that much Nicolas Cage? 24 hours of Nicolas Cage? <sighs> he, you could at least leave your house with the Duck Dynasty. It's true. But your daughter's going to be partially raised by Nicolas Cage. She's going to learn how to Nicolas Cage freak out before she even has her first words. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can appreciate the power that that goes along with Nicolas Cage more than the Duck Dynasty. With guys. great Nicolas Cage comes great responsibility. I Is imagine that it would be a better learning experience <laughs> for me. All right. Well, that's our show for this week. Grant, thank you very much. It's late. Uh, You've been up for a while. Thanks for um, having me. Mail at RageSlight.com is the email address. If you haven't listened to already, TV Dude should be out this uh, by the time this comes out, right? Yeah, on, it releases Friday. Okay. So we talked about two some days ago. video game stuff, so check me out over on TVDudes.com. 
Um, and thetvdudes.com. Thetvdudes.com. Check back tomorrow as Grant said for hacking the system. And yeah, I think we need to look into this Nicolas Cage thing. Grant. <laughs> I think we really do. I need him on this show. Boost we're going to do a, a trial run. I'm going to wear a Nicolas Cage mask. And uh, we're going to tether me to you okay. with like a piece of string, one okay. meter distance. Okay. And you're going to take the weirdest shit of your life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> Bye, guys. Amanda does the editing. For rage select. You just you're a jingle writer. <laughs> yeah, I, I write jingles.